that uh, my house is full, but my field is empty, and he gave himself. Those songs go right hand in hand with the message tonight. When I was in Bible college in the 80s, now listen to this, that song was sung, my house is full, but my field is empty. Who will go and work for me today? And don't you think that did not penetrate this hard heart right here. It just went in there like a corkscrew. It just went right down in there and did the number, amen, and worked its work in my heart. And the Bible says that God will work a work in your days. He's talking about the heart work, that though it were told you, yet you will not believe. You won't believe what God can do with your life. Young people, you won't believe what God can do with your life if you'll just give it to him. I mean, who will go and work for me today is the question uh, in the song. And, you know, uh, uh, people uh, don't want to work for the Lord Jesus. They want to work for, uh, you know, everything under the sun, Wall Street, uh, Merrill Lynch, uh, uh, you name it. They're wanting to get involved in the multi-level marketing. Man, where is the money made? That's where we want to go. But where does God want you to go? There's harvest fields all around the world that need to be harvested. And, uh, you know, if money marks is all, it's in our eyeballs. And, and, and can I just say, honestly, that's where mine was before I surrendered my life. I, I was after it. Boy, I was just like everybody else. I just, I just wanted my, uh, my time, and I, I wanted to prove myself that I could be, a, 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 you know, self-sustaining and uh, most young men, and that's natural. That's natural for it. If a man don't want to work, provide for his family. Something's wrong with him. Shoot him. Shoot him. He's no good. He's no count. But I just, I just wanted uh, to provide. Me and Miss Crane just got married, and uh, you know we were uh, secular college, of course, and trying to work our way through and such. But well, God got a hold of our heart and sent us in a different direction. I'm so glad He did. I'm so glad He did, and He's taken good care of us. And I, I want to brag on Jesus tonight. I just want to brag on everything he's ever done for us. And I, I want to brag on being a part, just a small part. But, you know, if, you, if you're just a little small segment or a part of what God is doing in these last days, the song was sung this morning, it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. It will be worth it all. If you're a doorkeeper in the house of our God, you're not dwelling in the tents of wickedness. It will, it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Oh, yes. The text verse tonight is verse number 10 of chapter 13 of the book of Mark. The gospel must first, uh, why don't we prioritize the gospel? Why don't we put it first? I, I heard one young man tell me that he was going to make a million dollars and then he was going to go so he wouldn't have to, uh, you know, depend on anyone else to send him. Well, that's been about 15 years ago, I think. He's not gone yet. And furthermore, he's not a millionaire yet. <laughs> but anyway, you know, we have all kind of thinking. We have all kind of notions that, that come across the page up there. But it doesn't mean it's from the Lord. But notice what the emphasis is placed. Notice what priority is placed by our Lord. Do you have a red letter edition Bible? Mine is red right here. That means Jesus... Uh, is the one speaking, and he says in the gospel, my gospel, the death, burial, and the resurrection of who? Jesus. The gospel must first be published among all nations. In, in another uh, gospel, uh, it says, and then the end shall come. So tonight, uh, we want to speak on the priority. First, the gospel must be preached. The gospel uh, must be preached. We see the wars and rumors of wars that were mentioned here. But first, the missionary must go. You understand the, the significance of hearing those calls from missionaries and seeing them in the service and, and knowing they're a part uh, of this verse? First, the gospel must be preached. And then the end. Don't get the bad attitude towards the missionaries they're hastening the day of the Lord. They're drawing the net. They're getting the harvest in. They're going to the harvest fields of the world. The Bible says, then the gospel, the gospel must first be preached. 
That's what we're talking about tonight. We're talking about missions. Is that okay with everyone? We need boosters from time to time uh, on our uh, missions program. And, and here we see a prediction, but we don't have, uh, listen, uh, we don't have time for missions. Uh, and the missionary and his, his, uh, his uh, mission, his, his burden anymore to hear the burden of the missionary. God help us and God help a church that don't have a missionary program. It's nothing less than just, uh, nothing more than just a country club. Church don't have a soul winning program. Soul winning program is the mission program at home. Let's not give our missionary dollars if we're not doing soul winning work uh, at home. And by the way, uh, we are, we're, we've been having blitz for a long, long time on Saturdays. But this Wednesday night, we're going to start our, our missionary program at home, our soul winning program at home. We'll start it at 530. We need your help. We need you to get on that bus like you did Saturday, a whole busload of people going out and excited. And I, I, I didn't meet one sour apple. I didn't meet one SpongeBob out there. Amen. I did not. I, I saw a, a neon shirt this morning. I, I think it was you, Donald. <laughs> I said, there he is. There's SpongeBob. But anyway, uh, I don't know if that's a bad or a good uh, cartoon. I don't know. I know there's some bad ones. And uh, Jackie and Jenny, they tell me about these things. And they say, Daddy, we can't even let our kids watch, uh, watch the uh, cartoons anymore. But anyway, look, uh, either we keep the priority, uh, the, the gospel message, uh, or, or we get left behind. Somebody will. Because the gospel must first be preached. It must. And it will. Now, look, church at Temple, can I get y'all's full and undivided attention? Either we get a part and do a part and have a part of the Great Commission or somebody else will. I'd rather it be Temple Baptist. I'd rather it be said that our church is the one sending missionaries. By the way, if you're a church that's never sent a missionary or if you're a church that's never had anybody call to preach, I'm doubting. I know there's some young churches and I know it takes time and I understand all that. But 20, 30, 40, 50 years as a church and never had anybody call to preach, you better, you better question whether you have a scriptural church or not. I can share with you a, a few dozen uh, good men that are serving tonight uh, from this church here at Temple Baptist Church, and we appreciate the efforts of the Institute. We appreciate those who teach uh, uh, during the night watches. Amen. While uh, we're slowing down at home, uh, there's people up here teaching, and there's students up here learning, and they're learning. What are we learning? We're learning how to be a faithful witness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to say, first of all, tonight we see the deceptions, yet first the gospel uh, must be preached. Look at verse 5 and 6. Take heed, lest any man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, uh, and shall deceive many. In another place, the Bible says that even the very elect in Thessalonians would be deceived uh, uh, if it were possible. Even the very elect would be deceived. And so there's much deception. There's many uh, antichrist uh, uh, spirit, or there, there's only one antichrist, but uh, uh, there's many who have the spirit of antichrist, uh, and it's already working in the world, the scripture says. And so we understand that, that we need the pure gospel going around the world. We need it pure. We need it unadulterated. We need the pure, wonderful workings of, of God in the gospel. It's the dynamite. Don't forget that it's the dynamite. It's what will change this world. It's what will hold this world together. Just think if the remnant has been, if the remnant of God's people are removed. I'm talking about the salt of the earth. I'm talking about the, the, the church of Jesus. Just think if it's removed, how wicked this world will be. We need the church. Thank you, church, for being the church. The church is the assembly of baptized believers. I said assembly. I said local, visible, tangible assembly of baptized believers. It's not mystical, spooky, or Roberts on TV. Amen. That's not it. It's not the electronic church. It's not Rex Humbard. It's not any of those. I'm saying it is the local assembly of baptized believers. As much as I appreciate our live broadcast each and every week and thank God for it, for our shut-ins and those that can't come out, for those with uh, uh, low immunities, thank God for that. That's a, good, that's a good ministry. 
but it ain't the church. It never will be the church. Church is an assembly of baptized, a local assembly. The ecclesia is the called out ones. We're called out of this world, and we're gathering together. The Bible says, as a manner of some is, you're together together. <laughs> and so much the more, as you see that day approaching, don't you stop your Sunday night service. Don't you dare stop your Wednesday night service. I'd question that. I question a church that's letting up at the end. I said, I question a church that's letting their foot up off the accelerator at the end. We better put the accelerator down. We better push it all the way to the floorboard. The pedal to the metal all the way to the finish line. I don't know what Christ would say to a church that gave up. I don't know what Christ would say to a Christian who gave up. Right towards the end. He's not going to say thou good and faithful servant. Don't, think, don't you dare think God's going to lie. Call you faithful if you're not faithful. So we see the deceptions, yet first the gospel. The gospel must be preached. Amen. The gospel. What's more important than the gospel? I don't know of anything. Social justice is not important. I'm sure to tell you that. Uh, any of these things that, uh, you know, reading the newspaper in the pulpit, churches today, these liberal churches, they're not even going by the Bible. I told, uh, I told my TBI class the other night, uh, it came to me, I said this, I said, you know what, uh, if this pandemic is keeping people out of church, uh, but not out of restaurants, <laughs> hey, I go by the restaurants, it's I, told, uh, I, got, uh, I mean, I might look like a country bumpkin, I might have a truck, but it, uh, it, I was born la la at night, but not last night. He said, there's so much the more approaching the two people I said. And, uh, church, uh, when the real battles come, when the real battles come, there'll be nowhere to be seen. The apostasy has begun. The beginning of sorrow has God forbid. Did you know you can apostatize yourself? Stay home eight to ten months. I hope they're watching. Stay home. Possibility. You will apostatize yourself. I don't want God to turn his back on me. I don't want the power. It's just me and Miss Crane down here and she's going to get a preaching to. She might need it. But anyway. I feel like preaching. Hey, let the fake preachers keep you from hearing the word of God. Let the fake churches shut down their church services. Church is going on. The Believers are there, and they're getting something out of it. Uh, amen. That's their soul. Uh, it's disgusting. Christianity in the 21st century. From a have it tonight. Is that all right? It's disgusting. I hear so many excuses. I'm sick of excuses. I wonder what God thinks. I'm not perfect. I don't even claim to be. I make mistakes every day. I sin every day. I ask God to forgive me every day. But I know where my, bed, my bread's buttered on. Amen. I know that I cannot forsake the assembly or abandon the church. I know that. You said, preacher, what happened to that sweet heavenly message this morning? Well, I'm trying to get you ready and fit for heaven. Amen. How do these pitiful people waste their whole life playing church? Some of them are having church, but they're playing church. I say, 
Woe be unto me if I preach not the gospel. I must preach the gospel. Amen. We see the deceptions yet, but first, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, pre we must preach. Get you a preaching point. I said, get you a preaching point. And look up. This is my preaching place. Amen. If I'm gone, I, I've got listed some guys that's going to preach for me. I'm going to see the baby. Don't, don't anybody get all upset. You would too. See that little, oh, can I give a testimony? She's done won my heart over, brother Richard. That little old sweet Caroline Crane, God bless her. You know what I prayed? Johnny's got three blondies. I said, dear God, can you change something up? Can you do something for us? Can you let us know you're still working? Now, when you're a grandpa, you'll, you'll start doing this. I said, Miss Crane, the grandma, she's black-headed. I said, is there any way you could just show yourself real and just let her be just as black-headed as a, just as black as coal. Just let it come out just as black and fuzzy-headed as it can be. Johnny says it's got blue eyes and he's praying that it'll keep the blue eyes. Y'all ever pray over little silly things like that? Little particulars, little petty little things that don't matter to a hill of beans. And I said, he, he, he didn't know it, but I said, well, if you prayed for it to have, keep his blue eyes, I said, I, me and your, and your mother have been praying that it have black hair. It's got black hair. <laughs> hey, you think God's got a sense of humor? You know he loves us. I said, do you know what God loves you tonight? God loves us. He wants to fulfill his will in our life uh, and all along life's way. If we're doing what us, he'll give us the heart's desire. If we commit our way unto him, he said he would give us the desires of our heart. Psalm 37, verse number four. May I ask a question? How many prayers has he answered for you lately? Come on now. Don't hold back on me. Baptist, don't you die on me. That's Noah Fry saying that. By the way, Here's a prayer request for you. I saw a picture of him and Sister Polly sitting up on the porch. And uh, he said his desire, his prayer, his heart's desire. Some people don't want to go to church. And then there's some folk like Noah Fry who want to go and can't go. And he said his goal is to be able to drive Sister Polly to church. They're sitting up there. They look like there's courting and sweethearts and teenagers sitting up there on the porch. Somebody took a picture of them. Boy, if that ain't a representative and ambassadors of Jesus Christ, I don't know one. And then I talked to Brother Bell. I try to keep y'all informed. Brother Bell said this. He said last Sunday morning, not last Sunday, but Sunday before last. He was listening. I was preaching on a glorious church. I don't know if y'all remember the message. He said me and uh, Sister Mamie tuned in to the broadcast. Uh, see, I said it was good. It's helping people who are shut in. Bless their little heart. He said, Pastor, he said, I want the church to know that it was almost like we were sitting right in the service. We participated in the singing. We heard the special music. We heard the message, and it thrilled our hearts. It thrilled them. If we can thrill the old saints of God and keep them renewed and in charge, praise God, that's a ministry. Amen. So we see these deceptions. We see the wars and the rumors of wars. Uh, yet, uh, first, the preaching must occur in all nations. Uh, all we must sacrifice and give to missions, folks. Uh, I, but I believe all of us can do a little more for missions. Amen. I appreciate what we're doing for the sacrificial gift. I believe we'll raise that $25,000 for whole missions and that's to take care of the grounds and the buildings and it's much needed if you knew the maintenance just ask Donald he can tell you he said pastor we need some money for the, the, the other things and I said Donald God ain't broke God ain't got old timers he knows our need he said yes pastor I believe that I believe he wants to bless us I said he'll bring it in he knows we have a need 
I said, praise the Lord. If you know what, we need to also consider this, that 85% of the mission offerings that are collected by the churches in America is for home missions. I'm not against home missions. I'm not talking about the church, local church now. I'm talking about what the local church uh, supports for people who are living in America to keep America going. You see what I'm saying? 85% of all mission offerings collected goes to home missions. Again, if you say I'm against home missions, I'll tell you a liar. I'm not against home missions. I'm for home missions. I support home missions. We support evangelists right here, like Brother Fry and Brother Bell. We support them. They're home missionaries. We've got to keep our country strong. We've got to keep the churches stirred up. Yes. Here's what I believe. I believe we start. We better start spreading it out just a little. We better put it out there in in Asia, where they're red hot for the gospel. We better put some down there in Mexico, where Brother Wins winning. I'm talking about he's winning tens of thousands of people to the Lord down there. He said he was going to call me back down there to preach uh, when it comes winter. He says he, he he said, Pastor, I saw him over here the beams rally. And he said, Pastor, he said the airfare is cheaper in the winter. He said, it won't take but just a few hours. You'd be in Mexico City. He said, we'll preach you again. Me and Brother Dan had, Dan Jr. had the time of our life. If you don't see Brother Theo here tonight, Brother Theo went to his home turf of Slidell. And he said, Pastor, if you don't mind, he said, I'm going to stop off and hear Dan Jr. preach tonight in my hometown of Slidell, Louisiana. And he said, if they'll let me, I'll get up and give a testimony how God saved me in this town 37 years ago. When me and Miss Crane got married 37 years ago, Brother Theo was just getting saved, amen? It was all because of the bus ministry. Again, I'm not against home missions. What I'm against is supporting home missions and not supporting the, the foreign mission. Why? Because God said both in Jerusalem, that's home, and in all Judea and Samaria and unto the other And so there's a fourfold. You've got to be obedient in the spread of the gospel. It says among And did you read that? Folks, it's not an option. We've got to get, listen, we've got to get gospel out. We've got to make sure people understand. We've got to make sure that we're drawing the net. We've got to make sure we are reaping the harvest. You know, it's the harvest season. My son said right behind his house over there, and, and uh, we've seen this before, uh, they've got cornfields everywhere up in Indiana. I mean, look, Nebraska's not the only corn husker state. The whole Midwest is nothing but corn. And Johnny, he's surrounded by corn. He said they just cut his field back there behind his house. They harvested his field. And I've watched those big trucks. They run right side by side by the combine. And they never stop. During the harvest season, they've got lights on those uh, harvesters, on those combines. And the big trucks just run right beside them. And while they're cutting, they're unloading. And they run just as fast as the tractor does. That's getting in the harvest. I think we need to speed it up just a little bit. You know that the, the Bible says that, that, uh, that, that the little foxes spoil the grape on the vine. They uh, ripen into harvest. Uh, but the foxes, the little foxes, uh, will come along and take that which belongeth uh, unto the Lord and they will defile it. They will corrupt it. They'll make Mogan David out of it. God wants to use it for the Lord's Supper. You see the difference? Thank God we don't use Mogan, David. I said as long as I'm the pastor here, we'll never use an alcoholic beverage in, a, in the Lord's table. That's blasphemy. You know there's churches that do that? I don't want my children or grandchildren to take their first drink at the house of our God. I don't believe our, our Lord ever took of an alcoholic beverage. No way. Amen? Amen. That's good preaching, Brother Crane. So we're to go simultaneously throughout the whole world. And uh, listen, we need to support our mission program. It's imperative because the end cannot come until we support uh, the preaching of the gospel into all the world. That's what the Bible says. I mean, look, we need to take it further than we've ever taken it. We need to go with the gospel. 
Now, what are we doing tonight uh, for worldwide missions? Do you believe in it? Do you support it? Do you get behind it? Do you get a burden when these missionaries come by here? Or you just say, well, that's just a feeling. I better watch it. I better pray a while before I support. One year, Brother Johnny told me, he said, you know, him and his wife kind of got messed up. I think he gave that testimony while he was down here preaching for us. And he said, you know, he wrote down one thing for the faith promise card and his wife wrote down another and they ended up doubling their missions giving that year. And so, you know, they talked about it and said, well, should, should we, you know, what do we do? We, 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 we absolutely doubled. You'd be surprised what some people are giving uh, and, and even not even making a whole lot of money, but they're giving a lot, but God's, God's bringing it in. It's a faith promise. It's, it's, it's if God will bring it, I'll give it. And they doubled, they doubled their giving to missions one year. But Johnny told me, he said, Dad, he said, I'll do it all over again. It was the best year we ever lived. God blessed us so mightily. Woo! I want to be under the spout where the glory comes out. How about you? Look at number three here. The preachers will be delivered under the courts to see the judge. You'll see this in verse number nine. They will hail them into the court and we've already seen that beginning. We've already seen the, the, the hatred. We've already seen the, 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 the malice that people have towards Christianity. You know, it's not popular to be a Christian anymore. You're not fitting into society. They think we're some kind of quacks. They think that we're some kind of uh, ugly people that think differently than the rest of the world. Well, we do. We think according to thus saith the Lord. God said he would keep his men. Look at verse number 11 of our text tonight. It says, but they shall lead you and deliver you up and no thought beforehand what you shall speak. Neither do you premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour that speak ye for it is not that, uh, that not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, thank God. The Lord is going to take care of us when we're brought to before these uh, councils uh, and synagogues uh, to be beaten. It might even be the religious groups. Uh, uh, it might even be those that think differently than us that are bringing the accusations or they're bringing uh, some kind of charge against the true church uh, uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but he says it's a testimony. He said it's brought for a testimony for my sake and a testimony against them. Good night in the morning. All these things are going to happen. But he said, yet first the gospel must. You can't let all this stuff, you can't let these, these things that draw your attention away, don't let that take your focus off what you're supposed to be doing. Keep having church. Keep the Keep Somebody asked me the other day, are you going to open up? When are y'all going to open up? never seen churches uh, close up for a drop of a hat and then drop the hat to shut the church down. It's wicked. I said, call, tell them I said so. It's wicked for a church. I know I might get COVID. My son had to shake, shut his doors down one week. God healed him up and he's back at it. He's sawing wood again. Amen. He's got his gospel chainsaw going again. I'm talking about for months on end, churches have been shut. Some have never opened back up the whole time this thing's been going on. That's a disgrace. Look at that in the sight of what God might think of that. We have had people come to our church recently because their church is not open. Uh, we've gotten new, many new members because their church is not open on a night service. And uh, you know what? What? Uh, you snooze, you lose. That's all I can say. You snooze, you lose. Who do you think God's going to bless? The one that's opened up uh, uh, full time or the one that's opened up uh, uh, one third of the time? I said, who do you think? What Christian you think God's going to bless? You think God's going to bless, God's gonna bless the wholehearted? It's pretty logical. You don't even have to be spiritual to think that one through. Amen. 
Today, let's stay focused, church, on sending missionaries. Young men, surrender your life to serve the Lord. If I was a young person, I went to the Philippines. I fell in love with the Filipinos. I fell in love with those. Listen, if I was a young person tonight, I'm still young, but I'm talking about 20s. If I was a young person tonight, I just believe I'd have to give myself to the gospel in the foreign outreach somehow. I'm going to motivate as much as I can, and I'm going to go on mission trips. Okay, that's wonderful. Dan Jr. the other day said, Preacher, when are we going to go on another mission trip? I said, Brother, they're not even going to let us leave the country right now. Wait just a minute. He said, I'm ready. I am ready to preach the gospel. Amen. Paul said, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. So why wouldn't we want uh, uh, to preach the word and the gospel of Jesus Christ? Uh, why wouldn't we want to believe that God had a supernatural call on our lives to go into all the world and preach the gospel? Did you know and understand, young men? Did you know that they will respect you and honor you more over there than they will over here? I got to Romania. I couldn't believe it. I just could not believe it. My own family don't think of me like those people over there. After 25 years of being in the country, they had a big shindig for us over there. That's why I went a few years back. And every one of them got it, said something about us. We had no idea they had those feelings. And they said, Miss Crane and I quote, we didn't know what missions was. We didn't know we were supposed to carry the gospel. We didn't know house. We didn't know and preach the gospel and brother Steve come to our country that's what they said it floored me I had no idea that I was making that big of an impact it was God it was God both the willing to do with his good pleasure amen so the Holy Spirit of God gives you what to say even in these foreign countries even to these heathen judges liberal jury members my wife got called up for jury duty not long ago and I said honey put the big family bible under your armpit and go on down there they didn't call her <laughs> did you know that God can overturn every liberal decision that a liberal court and a liberal judge has ever made did you know that God can turn over that you need to pray for our country you may not have country. I know I'm bulldog mean sometimes, but somebody needs to be. Amen. Somebody needs to wake us up. We've got too many cowards in the army of God. We need to get out here on Wednesday night. Let me say that again. It didn't go over too well. I said we need to all night and if you don't know how to go out soul winning you need to get with a good soul winner we got good soul winners in every segment of this church I'm talking about we've got some we got the best in the country get with one of them just be their prayer partner and look just who who get the most credit the soul winner or the one praying for the soul winner I don't know it may be like basketball you get an assist if you help pray for the soul winner to win a soul are you going to have anything uh, to show for when you get to heaven? Listen, uh, you, you're going to be saved so as by fire, there won't be any reward that God is going to give to you so that you can cast them down at the feet of Jesus and thank him for his love. If I ever Jesus comes, I'd stay so busy serving God. I'm your pastor. I'm supposed to tell you this. You better get yourself busy for God. You better have something to show how you were down here on this earth, pleasing unto the Lord. Don't you be one of them lazy, no, no good for nothing Christians that just loaf. Lazy boy, lifestyle. They never want a soul to Christ. Don't want to win a soul to Christ. They pray for souls in general, but they don't pray for individuals. They don't get a burden. They pray for they never name the missionary. Pray. Why don't somebody get so excited about missions that you start talking to our missionary? We've got almost a hundred missionary. I'm asking the church. Do you email our missionaries? It's free. 
I remember when we was in Romania. My wife and I, we called home once a month. That's all we could afford because it, it was at astronomical prices to call home, to call the states. I remember when we first got our, the first fax machine, we thought we were uptown. We never did get an email the whole time we lived over there. We never did. We didn't know what one of them was. And now we got it. I mean, you can call Brother Mikko and it, you don't even, look, you don't even, it's not even charged. It's free. He's, he's got one of these uh, satellite phones or something. I don't know. Magic Jack or something like that. Get them down at Walmart. You can call them just like a local number. I'm not on anybody tonight. I guess I am, though, in a way. Let me ask a question. How many called Brother Mickel since he's been gone? What, it's been on six, seven, eight years? You ever called him? He's one of the finest Christians I ever met. Y'all want to hear something sweet? Brother Mickle watched our service this morning. <laughs> he sent me an email. And he said, Pastor, that Oh, you don't know what Brother Bill, Brother Crane, I just... I said, what you calling for, preacher? You, anything wrong? Uh, you got any medical issues? You I'm just calling to let you know. That message you preached last Sunday, he said, it helped me. Well, you could have knocked me over with a feather. <laughs> well, <laughs> I got blessed. I'm talking about the man of God that has always encouraged me. We went to his church and he had 10 families. They take, take on 10 families at a time in his mission outreach. We were just one of ten. He'd have me and Miss Crane, the kids, get up and sing every night. All them other missionaries were there. Something about me and Brother Bell. He'd say, come on up. No other missionary sang the whole week. And we're not singers. Them kids learned to sing doing that, though. Little old Juju, she was just hanging on to her. Her sister's coat, her dress tail. She was just hanging on for dear life. Just stand up there on the stage. She's a little old bitty thing. She's making some kind of noise. She's been making noise ever since. By the way, it, the only time you see the word crane mentioned in the Bible, write this down the fly leaf of your Bible. You'll love it. You'll go back to re revisit this. The only time you find the word crane mentioned in the Bible the word chatter is right beside the word crane. So if you don't like long preaching, you've come to the wrong place because cranes chatter. Especially juju cranes. Amen. I talked to Brother LJ one night. They'd come back from up north. They'd taken their kids to college. I think Julianne was riding with them. And he, had, he came to me afterwards and he said, Brother Crane, he, just, he said, I just thought my girls could talk he said, but I want you to know that girl of yours, she said, he said, that girl can talk us underneath the seat. Never heard such talking in all of my, all the way from Chicago. That girl had the floor. That's my girl. I told her, I said, honey, if God was calling preachers, women preachers, I said, you'd be first up. She said, thank you, daddy. I'll just stay on the piano. Is that all right with you? She makes it talk. When she plays that piano, it sounds like a whole orchestra. Am I right, Brother Richard? It sounds like a whole orchestra when she's playing that piano. She makes it go. That's God. That's God. I told Brother Tommy the other night, I said, Brother Tommy, I said, don't you dare stop that singing. How many enjoys hearing him sing? That's blessed my heart. I said, boy, the Lord's blessing your voice. I had no idea you could sing. He said, I didn't either, preacher. I just being obedient. We didn't know Johnny could sing. He come back, Spirit of God fell on him. That's what happens. You don't know what God will do with you until you take a step. You got to have faith, believing that God's going to make something out of you. He will, if He's used old sinner like me. He can use you. Hey, by the way, can I just throw this out for somebody that might be scared tonight? You're not going to set back Christianity. You know all that God has to work with is old sinners. Look in the mirror. I'm talking about you. I said all that is like you and me. Amen.
First, the gospel must be preached. Hey, if we don't go and preach, you think we can support some men who are preaching? I know some good ones. I know a man from Australia. He came through here uh, not too long ago. I, I want to support him so bad I don't know what to do. We don't have a missionary in Australia. Do you all remember? Tingston's. Tingston's. He's got the limey talk. He's raised down yonder, down under. I say yonder and they say yonder. He, he's one of them. He came over here and got his Bible college degree. He worked in a church for a long time. He's been proven he's a good man. Ain't no reason why we can't support him. We need to start giving emissions. Let me ask you a question. Has there ever been a time in your adult life since you've been a member of this church that you gave more to missions than you do now? What caused a decline? Was it a job demotion? I can understand that. But if it wasn't a loss of pay, I don't understand it. It wasn't a loss of pay, it was the lack of faith on our part. Do you see what preacher's trying to say tonight? I think we slid way back. I remember when Brother, uh, Brother Calap was here. I remember when Brother uh, Larry Smith was here. And we zoomed, I'm talking about, we zoomed up the hill of missions. Unbelievable. Brother Calap told me, he was a, listen, this was the last church he preached at before he went home to glory. They did an operation on him the next Monday morning after he flew out of here. I took him to New Orleans. I said, bye, preacher. Last time I seen him on earth, I'll see him over in glory. He said, I, your church is doing great. You're over 100,000 in missions every year. He said, but, 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 he said, you can do more. He said, I have a formula, and I have it figured out. He told me later what it was. He said, it don't ever go wrong. And he said, you're not given all you can give yet. He said, there's more. And that's when we were given over 100,000 emissions. And all I'm saying right now, we're scraping the bottom. We really need to consider our mission, outreach, our mission program. Brother Kenneth Allen will tell you, the reason this church has been blessed of God is because we've always been a love, a supporter, and we've always been in tune to God in our mission program. I'm not saying we're doing a bad job. I'm just saying that we can do much better. Families, take an analysis, take a summation of your giving uh, outreach to missions over and above your tithe. Now, don't give your tithe to the missionary. They don't need your, your tithe. Your church gets your tithe. It belongs to the storehouse. It belongs to the church house. But over and above your 10% belongs to missions. We've got to give to missions. The gospel must first be preached into all the world. All How's that going to happen if we don't give to missions? Did you know there's a blessing on each one who gives? I'd be eager if I were you to give. Because God is going to bless his gospel. Furthermore, he's going to bless the people who are supporting his gospel. I believe that. I really believe that. And I believe what Johnny said struck a nerve in my heart when he said it. He said, Daddy, we've had the best year in our family that we've ever had. He said, it's been great. And he said, it wasn't a mistake. He said, we could have gone back and redid it and recalculated it, but we'd have missed out on the blessing. May it never be said that the members of the Temple Baptist Church hate the preaching of the gospel. So while I don't hate it, if you're not given to it, you do. The Bible says where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So if you put a little more extra, you may not even have it. That's where faith promise comes in. And God put some figure on your heart to give to missions over and above your tithes, give it. That was the Lord. That wasn't preacher. That was the Lord. He'll touch it. He'll bless it. He'll multiply it. You give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give unto you and unto your bosom. We try to increase it every year. 
Every year I've been here. God has blessed us beyond measure. Hey, don't, don't nobody get jealous of me. Just start giving. Maybe you're upset. God's been blessing me. Hey, he's no respecter of person. You can get it. I said you can get it. You want to stay down low all your life? You just hoard up your money and you just save up your money until the, the day of the Lord comes and you just see what the Lord has to say about it. You'll be glad you listened to me. I'm not much, but I am your pastor. I believe if you'll listen, God will bless it. This is what they said about Brother Hiles. The, the people at the, at, the, at the First Baptist, this is what they said about them after Brother Hiles left. His eulogy was this, we caught what he taught. We caught it. He got a vision for the world. We caught it. They got a vision for the world. Catch the vision. Paul had a vision. The Macedonian man, come over. Come over into Macedonia. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could send a team around the world? We've got some hardworking men here. Not just to build buildings now, but to help them manually, yes. Humanitarian help, yes. But while they're there, to give the gospel of Jesus. Did you know Brother Mickle's church goes every year to a mission field somewhere other than Belgium? They take a group every year. Our little mission church over in Belgium takes a mission trip every year of the men in the church and some of the ladies go. Where's our love for missions? All right, this week I want somebody to do this. Call the office and ask for the email addresses. And if they're too busy, and they are, Come down here and go through the files. You're welcome to them. Get their email. Become Facebook friends. It don't cost nothing to do that. You say, ah, oh, it's for kids. Use it for the gospel. <laughs> Use it. It's free. I put verses on there all the time. They're probably tired of me, but I keep doing it. Why, preacher? Why do you do all that? The gospel must first be preached. It all I don't know if it was when I was over there or later on, but there's Filipinos by the hundreds that follow me on that crazy social media thing. I don't know how they started following. I don't know where they met me. I can't tell one from the other. But I know one thing. They love me. They love Miss Crane. They treated us so royally over there. We didn't want to come home. I mean, they wined us and dined us. They took us out. They put us in the finest hotels. And they're just a mission. <laughs> Think on that a while. Think on that a while. What can we do to help the missionary? If the missionary's done that to help me as a pastor, what can we do to help the missionary? There's something that we're lacking in. I believe God's on it tonight. Let's pray. Father in heaven.